they still live to see the other temple of King Solomon, but they don't have the money to build something like that. But this is all they have. So we go hundreds of years again, we roll with the time, and then 22 BC, to this area comes a very big king. King Herod, Roman King Herod. He comes to the Jews and he tells them, listen, I'm going to build for you a huge temple. Something that was never seen before. A huge temple. But he looks at this mountain and he says, how can I do? I have a small mountain and I want to build a huge temple. That's not enough. So you know what King Herod does? Something that we can do. He enlarged the mountain. He makes the, the mountain three times bigger. How did he do that? takes the mountain, he surrounds it with a wall, he shaves all the mountain, he makes everything flat. Look at that. It's flat. You see everything is flat? It's not a mountain anymore. Right? It's a huge arena. He shaves everything, he makes it huge. And on the top, he builds the temple. A huge temple for the Jews and the Holy of Holies will be on top of the rock yeah. remember the rock yeah. always the rock in the middle and that will be the temple of the Jews that also Jesus will come to Jesus when Jesus comes to this area right he was born in Nazareth after 30 years they kick him out to Capernaum next to the Sea of Galilee and after three years, he makes all the so, miracles, walking on the water, reviving the, de the dead people, uh, healing the sick people, doing all the miracles. After three years, he goes to Jerusalem. He goes to Jerusalem because he has to complete and Shabbat. He has to complete his mission. What was Jesus born for? Why he was born? What his mission? Serve the people, but also to bring salvation. What happened? What is the first crime in humanity? The first crime that, that we did, Adam and Eve, what did you do? Eating the fruit, the forbidden fruit. We're not sure it was the apple, by the way. <laughs> I always say apple, but we're not sure. It was, an, it was the fruit, but we don't know if it was an apple. It's nice to say an apple. Because an apple is red and nice, right? Uh, so she ate, she did the first crime and Jesus is coming to this world to try and bring salvation to humanity because since then we are, we are, we have to carry this sin. That's why he comes to Jerusalem because he understands that this is the time to do it. He comes to Jerusalem, he comes to Mount of Olives. He has relatives on the other side of the mountain. So Sunday, remember Sunday of the Palms? Yes. There is Sunday of the Palm. Yes. He goes up the mountain, coming down, and he wants to go into the temple. People, they heard already about the person, the, the man from the Galilee, who makes miracles. They are very, very excited. So they take palm leaves and they put in front of him, like a red carpet. They take their clothes and they put for him to step on. That shows that they respect him very much. And he goes into the temple. What does he do in the temple? What does he do in the temple when he arrives there? He's shouting. He's very angry. He tells the money changer, you are cheaters. You take all the money. You cheat the people. In the most important place, you cheat the people. You tell them that this uh, lamb for sacrifice is two kilos, but it's only one kilo. And you take more money, you're cheating, and he's angry. And he takes the table of the money changer yes. and he turns them. Yes, yes, yes. He's very angry. Then at the end of the day, he will go back. And that he will do Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, every day, going back and forth, walking back and forth. But Thursday is a special day. What is Thursday? Passover. 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 And Passover, you need to do a big dinner. We do also big dinner today. The Jews are still doing Passover, big dinner. Like a, like a Christmas Eve. Okay? Like a big dinner. 
and he's looking for a place to find in the in the old city in the city uh, to be with his disciple with the last last to have the supper. He doesn't find, so he goes to Mount Zion. Look here, if you follow where I'm showing you, do you see the wall? You yes. see the wall? Okay. Yes. Yes. So let's put the wall. Do you see a tower and a church? Just straight ahead, yes. see tower and a church with a gray yes. uh, roof, right? Yes. This is Mount Zion. Okay, this is Mount Zion. This is where he will find the only place because everything in the city is booked. No Airbnb, no hotel, no hostel, nothing. Everything is booked. People came from all over. This is the only place he will find a room and he will have the supper, the dinner. That will be the last supper. Because who is going to betray him? Who is going to betray him? Judas. He already tell them, someone here is going to betray me. <laughs> okay, he tell them. And that's exactly what will happen. So what we are going to do, just after we leave this and we go back to the bus, we are going down to Gethsemane, to the Garden of Olives, to see the Gethsemane, the place where you make oil. Oil, to olive tree, uh, um, olive oil, right? Because we know that back then they used a lot of uh, olive oil because they needed it for lamps, for the temples, for uh, shrines, uh, for eating, everything. So this was a huge. If you look on, look back, you see a lot of olive trees even today. All the years there were always olive trees. Jesus arrived here to the garden. In a second we're going to go into the garden. And he goes around in the garden, he begs his three disciples, the people that he followed, he begs them, please, don't go to sleep. Because I'm in a big, big agony. I suffer. This is the most sad evening of my life. Please stay with me. Stay awake. Support me. But what happened? They fall asleep. He stays alone in the garden. He walks to the church. Very, very sad. Very agonized. And he prays to God. At a certain time, he falls on a big rock. And he prays to God, please take this suffer for me. But nothing helps. When the sun rises, the Roman soldiers will arrive with Judas. Judas Iscariot. And he will come and he kiss him. The kiss of betrayal. The Roman soldier, when he see that he kissed him, they know that this is the man that they are looking for. And then what Jesus is doing, he's coming forward and he say, I'm the man. Take him. He's willing to go. Because this is what he was born for. This is the meaning he was born for. To bring salvation. He knows that the Roman soldier will take him. He knows that he will die. He's ready for this. <coughs> and that's exactly what happens. The Roman soldiers are taking him back to Mount Zion, to a dungeon, to a prison, underground. And in the morning, after he didn't sleep, of course, the rest of the night, they will take him to the fortress of Pontius Pilate, the governor of Jerusalem, of Judea. And Pontius Pilate will judge him to crucifixion. And then from this fortress you will start walking with the cross all this via della rosa that we are going to walk later on. What are we going to see inside? This church is called the Church of the Agony, the Church of Gethsemane, the Church of all nations because many nations, many countries donated money for the church. And it is built by a very special architect called Antonio Valencia, an Italian architect. His architect is very special. Why? He is doing something very, very good. He took the story and he tried to put it into the architecture. <laughs> what do I mean? When you go to this church today, now, you will feel that it's not a happy church. It's not a colorful church. When you look up, you see the domes, they are very blue with 
stars light the night night sky, like you walking yourself in the night, like you are going to walk in the Gethsemane between the in the Garden of Olives. You will feel dark. You will feel sad. You will feel the agony of Jesus of the last night of his life. And that's the beauty of this church. Okay? So what are you going to do? Ah, of course. In the middle, there is the altar. Just in front of the altar, there is a big, big, big rock, a big stone on the floor. This is the stone believed to be the, the stone where Jesus was falling and crying to God. Around this, this stone, there is a fence, a small fence that looks like the crown of thorns. Remember that Jesus is wearing the crown of thorns. And on this crown, there are birds. And these are the birds, that, yeah, they symbolize the believers. The soul of the believers are like birds. So this is what we're going to see. I won't be able, I won't be able to talk inside. That's why I wanted to explain here, so you know everything when you go into the church. Okay? Okay, time. Okay? We are going to meet. We're going to go into the church together. We go from the door into the church itself. And outside the door, we will be now with 1050, 1050, 50 at uh, 1120, 1120, you are outside the doors.